Carl. Yes. I want a word with you. In private. Mr. Sheridan, you can take your lunch now. Have we met before? No, the name's Smithy. I'd like to hire you, Mr. Cobb, to buy me some goods and deliver them down near Wagga Wagga. All right, I'll have one of my drivers take care I of I want you, Mr. Cobb. I'll pay extra for your personal attention. A trip like that takes a couple of weeks. Probably cost you, oh, 20 sovereigns. Done. It's a lot of gold to be carrying around. Rich country, Australia. Now about the goods. I want two kegs of brandy, two of porter. And I want a complete cruiser. A what? For a lady to be married in. <laughs> you mean a trousseau? All right. This is her size round. And uh, she's about this tall. Now you pick what you think best. But be sure it is the best. Stockings, everything. And I want two coffins. What? What's wrong? Well, I didn't expect the coffins. You never do, do you? Uh, one this high, this wide at the shoulders. Is enough gold for all that? Sure, plenty to spare. Spend it all. If we can leave tomorrow, take double your fee. Wait a minute. What about the other coffin? Just a cheap one, nothing fancy. Make it about uh, your size. <laughs> Friday. Well, that rains two days. Wagga walk is that way, another 50 miles. Yes, you're right, Mr. Cobb. My station's yonder. Drop your knife. The knife in your sleeve. Quick. Get off the wagon. Ah. What's your name? What's yours? You've good nerves, mate. You'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Where the thunder you been? I thought you'd missed us. No. It's taken time, like. What's going on? Nothing, Mr. Cobb. What do you want from me? Drive on. I'll be right behind you. Blind man's bluff. What do you want with me? You're going to be married. First we eat. It's not good to discuss business on an empty stomach. Later, we'll talk. You eat like a real man, Mr. Cobb. Take some more. No, thank you. 
Right now, I've got a big urge to get on about my own business. Mr. Cobb. Remember, I have something to show you. Right, boys, now. Oh, it's beautiful. Is it all right, Temnos? Just what I wanted. Best in the world. No woman could have such nice boys. Go on, Temnos, try it. Try it for size. <laughs> I'm well pleased, my son. Call them all my sons when they're good. Perhaps even you. Now to our business. You're a gentleman. And a gentleman needs money and a wife. Why me? Why not one of these other gentlemen you have here? Anyway, I could already have a wife. We know all about you. Well, then you'll know that I have a good business and enough money for my needs. When I want a wife, I'll take one. Mr. Cobb. We're all convicts here, escaped with a price on our heads, and the gallows waiting. In this valley, we are safe and free and rich, very rich. We have gold here, but there's nothing we can buy with it. You could buy your freedom. We're all felons here but one. My daughter, I want you to marry her and take her to England. We'll give you her weight in gold every year. Now, wait a minute. You can have anything you want in the world, anything. Turn, you give her your name. It's a good name and respected. Do you seriously expect me to marry someone I've never even seen before? Anyway, what's to stop me from going through with this and then dumping her in Sydney and telling the police about you in this valley? Nothing but your word. Well, you put great trust in my word. Rufus. It just won't work, you know. The gold's not stolen. We worked hard for it. I don't care about the gold. No man's gonna hurt Toria while I'm alive. Smithy! Get out. Mr. Cobb, I do not please you. Well, whether or not you please me has got nothing to do with it. I can read and write, and I know manners. I wouldn't disgrace you. I'll be a good wife. I'm sure you would, but the world isn't a cattle market where husbands and wives are bought. I try hard to please you. Do not beg. In this valley, I am the law, and I say you have one choice. To marry Toria, or be buried in that other coffin you yourself brought here. someone because you love them. You don't send away for a husband like a piece of merchandise. Toria, this is your home. All your friends are here. This is your life. Why do you want to go away? Because that's what I must do. Oh, you needn't worry. I won't disappoint you. I'll be a good wife. You think I'm not good enough for a gentleman? No, it's not that. It's... Miss Toria, it's Tamros.
I'm all right, child. Are you sure he's what you want? He's exactly what you promised. But can you love him? Yes. What is it, Tamros? What's the matter? Just another warning from an old friend, telling me I haven't much time. Yet I have so many things to settle. Come in, Mr. Cobb. I think you should know a little about us. Toria was born in a Sydney prison. My man was killed trying to get me out. But we didn't want the child spawned in a filthy prison. Why were you in prison? For helping my brother to steal two pails of milk and a chicken. A very tough chicken. I've never known real freedom. Anybody can be free, Tamros, if they're willing to work for it. You see, you people have gold here, yes. But you have something far better, rich land. You could make respectable citizens out of your people, free to come and go. Not hunted animals. We are the hunters. Well, yes, so are wild dogs. The, the government's attitude has changed since they stopped shipping in convicts. You people have been hiding out here so long, you don't realize it. Don't talk to me about governments. I know what it's like on the outside. Like it's always been. When I was only eight years old, I worked in a coal mine, 12, 14 hours a day. And still I was hungry. And so I went on stealing. In prison, girls become women quickly. I swore my daughter would have a good name and a good marriage. And she will. Toria, go and dress. The preacher will be here. We will celebrate. This is a great night for us all. She all right? Yeah, she's much better now. Tam Ross is really quite a woman, isn't she? Yes, she is. She found this valley, made us a home. Except for her and Toria, we'd have been at each other's throats. You love Toria, don't you? We all love Toria. Well, then why don't you marry her? Me? Me, who's likely to meet the gallows any day? Besides, they uh, don't think I'm exactly a gentleman. Maybe if you just ask Toria. Look, Cobb, stick to your own business. If you don't treat her right, Good evening, Reverend. This is uh, Mr. Cobb. Good evening, sir. I'm the minister. The minister? Oh, I'm wanted as much as any of these men. But you don't have to steal or kill to be a felon. Sometimes, if you disagree a little, that is enough. It will be a legal marriage. Preacher! Oh, you're early. You must have heard we had some new porters. I'd come to see you any time, <laughs> but I'll try that porter. Now you're here, let the marriage be in the morning. Son up. Rufus, let the minister play us a lively tune. And get drinks for all. The dresses you chose are wonderful. She'll be a good wife. I feel in good voice, Mr. Cobb. I think we'll have the long service tomorrow. <laughs>
I'll do everything I can for it, Ambrose. Please. I don't want you dead. I don't want my son dead. I beg you. Look out. as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great power to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister, the departed, who now commits her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Put that away yet. Come on, lads. We've been expecting this. It's what Tamros told us, and she wouldn't want us glum. Not at Victoria's wedding. Now, wait a minute. This is no time to talk about a wedding. It was her dying wish. It's what she wanted. She said it's sunup. And that's what she'll get. There isn't going to be a wedding. You let her die thinking everything was right. No, I promised I'd take care of Victoria. Well, what Tamros wanted for you was wrong. You belong here. You can't pull a human being's roots out of the ground any more than you can the roots of a tree or a flower. Save the fancy talk. Miss Victoria, time for the wedding. I told you there wasn't going to be a wedding. All right, Reverend, now, let's get on with it. You can marry a man in that position. Where does it say that in the Bible? There are violent men in the good book, too, aren't they, Reverend? Now, get on with the wedding service. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together. Just get to the meat of it. Victoria, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do you part? I do. And do you, Christopher Cobb, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? For better or for worse, in sickness and in health? Sure he does. Now finish it up. I now pronounce you man and wife. Mother Cobb, you can kiss the bride. Never forget you, Smith. I'll remember all of you. Always. 
You make her happy, Mr. Cobb. You've got a fortune a dozen times over to do it with. If you don't, I promise I'll find you wherever you are and I'll kill you. I can believe that, Smithy. And there's only goodbye to be said. Goodbye, Smithy. Goodbye. And, and thank you. They need you, Toria. Just the same as they needed Tamros. Without you, they'll be at each other's throats. I'm all confused about everything. But I'm doing what Tamros wanted. You see, no amount of money will buy what you're looking for. Your place is here with the people you love. Would you live here? No. But we're married. Reverend, are we married? No marriage was ever joined with a knife. I promise I'd take care of you. That's exactly what I'm doing. Goodbye, Toria. There are kings in Europe who get by on much less than you've given up. You're a surprising man, Mr. Cobb. But I suppose that's why Tamaros picked you. Good luck to you, Mr. Cobb. Thanks. Thanks. 